Since charges are not affected just by magnetic fields, they can also be affected by electric fields, sometimes we'll have a charge that's moving through both of those fields, and we'll want to know uh, the impact of each of those. Now, a special case of this that is uh, a little easier to solve would be the requirements to have our particle travel in a straight line through some combination of electric and magnetic fields. So let's look at what those requirements would be now. This is for learning target 144. So we'll start off with the assumption that we have some positively charged particle, and we'll say that has a charge of Q plus Q, is moving to the right with some velocity V, and it's going through this magnetic field. And I'm just going to put a note here that the red is going to represent the magnetic field. So everything that's shown here, I've got the charge in black, and then the red, um, the red is for the magnetic field. These are all vectors pointing, uh, sorry, toward us, out of the board here. Um, so we have the little tip of the arrow coming toward us. We want to know uh, what kind of an electric field would we have to apply in this same region of space to keep our particle moving in a straight line. So let's think about what direction it would want to move just because of this magnetic field, first off. So we've got a positive charge, so it's the right-hand rule. We can do the left-hand rule if it's a negative charge, or just flip directions at the end. But right-hand rule, don't have to flip directions with a positive. Our pointer finger goes in the direction of the velocity vector. The middle finger goes in the direction of the magnetic field, the B field. So that's out of the board, so I have my pointer this way. I need to get my middle finger out of the board, so we'll rotate like this. And then my force is going to be acting downward on this. So the force due to the magnetic field will be this way. And I'll label that FB. So without any electric field, we would have our, um, our force causing this thing to rotate down this way. And as we saw before, it ends up going around in a circle here. So what kind of an electric field do we have to have in order to make this travel in a straight line? Well, we need a field that is going to push against this force. We need a force upward here from our electric field. And those two forces need to be equal in magnitude. OK, now remember the electric field, it always points in the direction of uh, the direction that a, that a force would act on a positively charged particle. So if we want a force upward and it's a positively charged particle, then we need our electric field pointing up like this. So our magnetic field and our electric field are going to be at right angles with each other, which it turns out is always going to be the case in these problems. Now, as far as the strength on this, we have to have, like you said, the two forces need to be equal to each other. So we can set the equations for those equal to each other as well. So we say the electric force, the magnitude of that, has to be equal to the magnetic force magnitude. The electric force, in terms of the electric field, is just Q times the electric field, um, the, the magnitude of the electric field. And then the magnitude of the electric, or the magnetic force, rather, is Q, V, B, times the sine of the angle, which again is going to be a, a 90 degree angle here. Our velocity vector is pointing to the right, and our magnetic field is pointing outward as a 90 degree angle, but in general, times sine theta. And so we can calculate the magnitude required for this thing to travel in a straight line of our electric field. We notice that Q appears on both sides of the equation. So the electric field has to have a magnitude, I can write that out this way, has to have a magnitude equal to the velocity times the magnitude of the magnetic field. And then times sine of 90 degrees, in this case is just going to be 1. 
So this is the strength of the electric field that we would need in order to keep this particle from curving and following this circular path.